Hello, hello, hello to you and a happy Friday. How are you doing? Just going to adjust that a little bit. Greetings to you from Dubai. Where in the world are you? Thank you for joining. Hello, hello. Come on in, come on in. Happy Friday to you. How are we today? How are we today? Where in the world are you? Do let me know. Just a few people joining. Hello, hello. Hope you are well. Do say hello. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a wave. Hi, thank you for joining. How are things where you are? <clears throat> How is your September going so far? Is autumn coming to wherever you are? It's it's really glorious here. It's a much more manageable temperature here in Dubai. Really, really lovely. Um, so yeah, we're quite enjoying being here. We've decided to stay here for a while longer. So tomorrow we are going to be hiring a car and we're going to head out and explore Dubai a bit. When we arrived last year, we it was all just quite overwhelming and we yeah we didn't really explore very much we kind of settled on this area and you know we've been quite happy here but actually my husband just sent me a, a message um, about a big new building that's going to be built like right there um in between me and the sea so um i think tomorrow we're going to have a look and see um, what other parts of dubai have to offer it's um yeah it, it is really great here but it would be nice to be able to walk a little bit more now the weather is is much more manageable anyway i'll keep you posted on all of that how are you doing how's your week been i'm i'm feeling a little bit nostalgic today um today is 20 years to the day since my ex-boyfriend and i uh, set off on a what seems like a crazy adventure now. Um, we were on two motorbikes and we decided to ride, ride from the UK to India, as you do. Um, it was such an adventure. So I've been really reminiscing and, and thinking about that. Um, I sent him a message this morning going, can you believe it's been 20 years ago? Um, so yeah, so I've had, um, yeah, I'm feeling quite nostalgic today. Anyway, anyway, what have you been working on this week? How are you doing? Um, has it been a good one? Do let me know. Let me know where you are. Let me know how you are. Hello, thank you for joining. Um, what else to update you on? Yeah, I've had lots of inquiries in about people management training and we're going to be starting another series of workshops in October. So if you are looking for some training for you or a member of your team, then do get in touch. Thank you to all of you who continue to refer friends and colleagues to me. I really do appreciate it. I really do. Lots of new joiners to this community. So welcome to each and every one of you. I'm really passionate about serving you and giving you lots of great value, not just in these weekly lives from wherever I am in the world, but also in our Ask Me Anything slots, 3 p.m. UK time every Monday. So do feel free to post your questions, your challenges, um, anything that's uh, top of mind into this group, let us know where you're stuck and what questions you have. I really do hope that you and your business are thriving wherever you are in the journey. But do you know what? If you're not, that really is OK. Please do let me know what support you need. I really want you to know that you are not alone. I can see that several of you have booked in a clarity call next week. Um, I'm really looking forward to speaking with you. And if you would like to get past your blockers, if you'd like to take that next step in your business, then do book in a call with me and let's give you a good dose of clarity. I always free up a few of those slots every week in my calendar to make sure that I've got time for members of this wonderful community. I want you to know that you are not alone. Um, you can find the pinned, uh, you can find the link to my calendar in the pinned post at the top of this group. <clears throat> I'm very excited about today's um, today's subject. Uh, enough chit chat, I think. Let's get going, shall we? Welcome to my weekly live at 12 noon UK time every Friday, where we talk about how you can simplify, grow and enjoy your business. Whether you're just starting out or you're several years in, whether you want to build yourself a nice lifestyle business or you're busy chasing world domination, I am here to support your journey. Last week, we were looking at making decisions. We, we looked at the link between decision making and goals. We were also talked quite a bit about avoiding overwhelm and I also shared my 
top 10 decision making tips with you. If you didn't get a chance to join me live last week, you can find the recording in this group. All of my lives are organised into guides. We have a simplify your business, we have a grow your business and we have, of course, enjoy your business. Everything I do falls into one or more of those three guides, simplify, grow or enjoy, so that you can easily find the support you need. I, I want all three of those for you, of course I do, but you will know which one is needed most for you right now. So do check out all of the resources in the guides in this group. So where are you stuck? What questions do you have? What challenges are you facing? Today's live was inspired by by several questions actually that Claire, hey Claire, um, who's a new member of our community has been asking in those weekly Ask Me Anything um, slots that I told you about that we have at 3 p.m. UK time every Monday. So Claire has been asking questions about funnels. So I thought I would do a live about sales and marketing funnels. Funnels really describe the customer journey. They connect potential clients with businesses that offer products and services that they're interested in. Many people I find who talk to me tell me that they find funnels confusing, uh, what they are, what they do, and how to get started with them. What's the difference between a sales funnel and a marketing funnel? And how do you make them work in your business? As always, today's live is practical and simple. It's designed to give you some things to think about, but also some concrete actions that you can take today. Today, I am gonna share with you the difference between sales and marketing funnels, and also share some of my experiences with building funnels. Sound good? Let's get started then, shall we? Very exciting topic. Okay. So a funnel is a way of describing the steps that your customer or your potential customer, if you like, goes through all the way from being a prospect all the way through to being a buyer. Simply put, it's a, it's a set of events, it's a set of steps, if you like, that take place before the customer buys your product or service. Marketing, as we know, is all about communication. It's about communicating your brand identity, what your business stands for, communicating how you solve problems and also how you serve your customers. And a marketing funnel is effectively a, a system or process, if you like, that guides potential customers through the entire journey from the very first time that they interact with, with your brand, they become aware of, of you and your company and your brand, all the steps, all the pieces, all the, all the, yeah, all the steps, all the processes, all the actions they might take along that road from, from awareness to the point where they develop the urge to buy a product or service, hopefully from you. A marketing funnel helps prospects get to know a brand. Its purpose is to educate and give people reasons to buy. That's a marketing funnel. And you can really think about your marketing funnel in two, in two sections, if you like. There's lead generation, and this is all about creating marketing campaigns to build awareness and interest. So you're looking to stimulate interest in your market. So things um, such as trade shows, uh, different kinds of events, inbound marketing, you might have heard people talking about content marketing, uh, viral campaigns, online ads, direct email, and a lot more. All of these tools are used to sell the brand and build awareness and interest in your target market. And then the second part of your marketing funnel, if you like, is, is then the nurturing of those leads. So one is the generating of those leads. You, um, people talk about getting people into your funnel. That's your lead generation. And when they're in your funnel, once they're in your funnel, what are you going to do with them? You are going to nurture them. You are going to add value to them. You are going to um, build up a connection with them. So once your prospect has developed an interest in your brand, then the next step then, as I say, is to nurture them. And this is where we are building a relationship with our prospect. Now, this might 
this might sound a bit weird because a lot of this happens without you ever having any dialogue like without you having direct one-to-one -one dialogue with your with your prospect necessarily you might not even know they exist and yet you are having this dialogue you are having you're building up this relationship with your prospect and that's what you want your funnel to do the prospect is introduced to your brand to your product to your services with tailored content to help them consider making a purchase now i've I've spoken before about the different steps, stages of marketing and the different stages of sales. And effectively, your funnel is, is, is automating, systemizing, um, guiding your prospect. You know what, when you go to, you know, you, you can go to a website and it can be really confusing, right? So you're trying to find a particular thing, but you're getting bombarded by, by all of these different options and all these different choices. And we don't have... A lot of time our time is very very precious and we've got the attention span of a gnat we really do and so what funnels do is they take away a lot of that noise funnels generally offer you one thing do you want to do this yes or no and you either click on the button or you don't you know you either go to the next stage or you don't there's not options you don't have choices you don't have you don't have a lot of different roads you can go down with a funnel. You might have a choice at the beginning, are you this or are you this, and that will take you down two routes. But the idea is you want to make it really super simple and streamlined for your, for your potential customers. You don't want to give people a lot of options or a lot of choices. So our marketing funnel is about presenting our brand to diverse organ um, audiences, right? So different people, different people that might be interested in your brand, in your products and your services. And its goal <clears throat> is to capture those people who could transition into becoming buyers. And those people are called prospects. And when they're identified and they develop an interest in the product or service, then they enter the sales funnel. Yeah, so our marketing funnel is all about awareness and more general interest. But when somebody becomes actually potentially interested in buying, that is when they become a sales prospect. And, and, and this is the connection effectively between the marketing and the sales, because your marketing is about building a relationship. So as an example, you might become aware through my social media or through through these lives or through our interactions that I'm a business coach. And so you're, you're, you're really then in, in my marketing funnel because you're aware of me, you're aware of my brand, maybe you follow me on social media, maybe you watch these weekly lives. And so you're aware generally and you have an interest in me and what I do. But at the point where you decide that you need a business coach or you need some advice about your business, that's when you transition from the marketing piece of the funnel to the sales piece because now you're actually a potential customer of mine. Many of you watching this might not be in the market for, for business coaching right now and so but I'm still building a relationship with you. I'm still offering you loads of value and that's what you want to do in your marketing funnel. And then at the point where you are actually thinking about buying, that's then when you go into the sales funnel. So I've talked a bit about the marketing funnel. Now, if I look at the sales funnel, the sales funnel, you can think of that as a system or as a process that guides then that sales pro, uh, pr prospect from the marketing stage through to converting to a customer. And the sales funnel effectively starts from, oh, right, I have a problem now. Yeah, because you can be in a you can be in a marketing funnel. You can be aware, as I say, of me and my brand and my services, and you can be interesting, interested, and you can get lots of value. Even if you're not particularly at the moment looking for a business coach, or you're not looking for that kind of support. Yeah. So your marketing funnel is much much broader. If you think about um, the funnels are always drawn like this, right? So your marketing piece is at the top, and as and as the customer develops the need and we get closer towards a buying decision, this bottom bit is the sales piece. And so in effect, although we're talking about marketing and sales funnels as if they're separate, they're actually not. You're, you want your sales funnel actually to be a continuation of the marketing funnel. 
Um, and so when you see that graphic, as I said, your marketing piece is broad because you're appealing. I want to appeal to anybody that is running a business that might be in need of a business coach, right? And then as you get to know me and my products and services more, you find out that actually I tend to coach people that are looking at making a transition. So either they're transitioning from, uh, you know, from, from employment to running their own business. Maybe they're just starting out and they need to make a bit of a plan. Maybe they're scaling up and they need to put a management team in place or they're going through funding rounds or they actually want to exit. So it's those transition pieces. And as you get to, to know me and, and, and my brand and my products and services, then you come to understand that more. And so then when you're at the point where you are ready for some support and you are ready to reach out, then you go into the sales piece. And that should feel seamless to you as a, as a potential customer. And so that narrow piece at the bottom, which is our sales funnel, that is when we are focused. The activity there is when we're focused on people that are actually interested in buying. And the ultimate goal of developing a sales or a marketing funnel is to turn prospective buyers into paying customers. And my advice is, is, is not to make this too complicated and don't get too hung up on sales or marketing. It's a continual process from you becoming aware. When did you first become aware of, of me, of Lisa Zevi, of Lisa Zevi, the business coach? That was the first moment, effectively, where you entered into my marketing funnel, because now you're aware of me. As I say, maybe you interacted with my social media. Maybe you saw an ad on Facebook and you bought my book. Maybe you were invited by a friend or a colleague to join this community. Maybe you were introduced to me or, or somebody told you about me. There, are, Maybe you watched my TEDx talk. There's many, many routes into my particular funnel. And then once you're in there, my job is to nurture you, is to offer you value, is to build a relationship with you. Even though I don't necessarily know who you are, I don't even necessarily know that you're watching me, but we're building up a relationship so that at the point where you might have the need, you might then consider entering into the sales funnel. And as I say, that should feel nice and seamless. So as I say, my, go my advice is that you don't try and make it complicated and you don't try to separate the marketing from the sales. You need to understand the steps, but it is part of a continuous process. <clears throat> and, th and the key question is really, what is the journey that you want your potential customers to take from the moment they become aware of you all the way through to the point where they're making a buying decision? And once you've got clear about what you'd like them to do, then even more importantly, what routes do they take? How do people find you? How do people come through your funnel? Because you have a funnel whether you whether you're conscious of it or not. You know, if effectively what we're talking about here is becoming more conscious of that. But but people are in a funnel in your business. They are at different stages of that awareness, consideration, decision process that we've talked about in previous lives. And so what routes do they take? You can spend a lot of time thinking about how you'd like people to behave but more importantly is what do they actually do what actions do people take how do they find you what do they do at the different stages of the process it's only by really understanding your customers that you can build effective funnels how do you encourage them to spend time with you watching your videos watching your lives reading your emails consuming all the wonderful value that you're offering how can you get them to start spending money with you so that they start feeling like a customer and not just an observer? You know, the, the conventional wisdom is that you want to get people to start spending a small amount of money with you because we're all generally quite risk averse. Um, and so starting out by something small like buying a book um, is a great way to start people feeling like they're actually a, a client of yours. If you, if you buy my book, I ask you to pay postage and packing, $4.95, it's a fiver, you know, um, you get great value, you get the book, you get the book for free, you're just paying for postage and packing. But now you feel like my customer because you have actually spent some money with me, even though it's a relatively small amount, you, you feel like a, a customer. And so then the next stage is, is easier to take. So 
once you've got clear about the process, and I really would encourage you to start with the process, don't start with the tech, start with the process. There are plenty of tech solutions out there to help you build what you want once you've figured out what you want that journey to be. So there's plenty of software out there that makes building funnels really easy, software like email marketing tools, sales tools, prospecting tools, outreach tools, advertising tools, email address finders, lead generation tools, CRM tools. You can actually build funnels starting from any of those different points that I just mentioned. You can really come at it from several different angles and that's certainly what I do and what I've done over the years. I, so just to, to let you know um, what I use to give you some ideas, I use ClickFunnels to build the web pages that you land on, whether you're coming in from a Facebook ad, from my weekly email or from my website, um, or directly in contact with me at the bottom of my email. There was also the links there. And I have ClickFunnels linked through to Active Campaign, which is an email marketing tool that I use to send out a series of emails to people who buy, for example, a, a free copy of my book I was just talking about. And these emails, their aim is to nurture and add value. I point you to particular chapters or sections of the book. And I also invite you to join this community. So several of you watching now um, may well have come in through that route. Um, people I track very carefully where people come from some people get introduced some people just stumble across it in Facebook and other people come at it actually from from my email from my funnels there are many email marketing tools um, I mentioned I use active campaign MailChimp is another one um, and they all allow you to do something pretty similar I mapped out the sequence that I wanted and I got my VA to build it for me in active campaign in a nutshell, marketing funnels are advertising a product or service to give people a reason to buy. Whereas what the sales funnel is doing is dealing with all the leads that come in from the marketing funnel, enticing people to buy not once but but uh, but as often as possible. And that so the sales funnel, as its name suggests, is in, is encouraging people to buy. And ideally, as I said, you want both. You want that seamless step-by-step -step processes that your process, that your prospective customer follows. It needs to feel straightforward. It needs to feel simple and it needs to have value add at each and every step of the way. So you need to be thinking about how can you offer people value at every stage of the process so that by the time they come to making a buying decision it's really easy for them to say yes but where do you start that's often what i get asked is you know where do you start and i think that's uh, that's uh, what claire was asking hi claire yeah where do you start and my answer is really it depends which piece of your business is really struggling and or not struggling but which which part of your business needs strengthening let me say do you, so one fundamental question, do you need to reach more people or are you struggling to convert the ones you have? And if it's both, you need to tackle one of those problems first. Don't try and tackle both of them at the same time because they are very different problems. So are you trying to get more people into the top of your funnel or are you trying to do a better job of nurturing and converting the ones that are in your funnel. Think carefully about where your problem is before you start just doing stuff. This takes time, it does take time, and there's absolutely no right way apart from systematically. One step at a time and test, test, test. If you're not testing, then you're just wasting your time and your money. Don't make assumptions about what people will or won't do about what image or video will attract attention, about what people will find useful or valuable. Test everything. People don't necessarily behave how you think they're going to. So everything has to be tested. The only thing that matters here is data, not what you think or what you feel. That's obviously where you start, but you want to test. It can get expensive really quickly if you don't do this in a systematic way. So what do you think? What is resonating most with you? Tell me about your experiences with funnels. Have you built funnels? Are you aware of when you're in a funnel? What questions do you have about funnels? Do let me know in the comments. What is your 
next step to take your business to the next level? What do you need to make you feel more confident? Do book in a clarity call with me and let's get you moving past whatever is blocking your progress and onto the next challenge. Before I close up for today, I want to give you some, some next steps, some concrete things that I suggest you do as a result of today's live. First, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? Do you, lead, do you need more leads or do you need to improve your conversion? I really would encourage you to get very clear about that, as I say, because the solution to those two problems is quite different. Next, map out the journey that you want people to take in the piece that you have identified is really the main challenge in your business right now. How can you add value to them at each and every step? And thirdly, you know what's coming, do take some action. Get one piece built. Maybe it's an automated email or a simple product funnel. Perhaps you start with a follow-up sequence from an event that you're running. Please do let me know how you get on with, with, with this and do get in touch if you want any support or you wanna talk it through with me. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed. You can absolutely do this. I'm gonna close up today's live with two quotes about funnels. The first is from the late, great Steve Jobs. You've got to start with the customer experience and work back towards the technology, not the other way around. And second, from the Austrian-American educator and author, Peter Drucker, the aim of marketing is to know and understand the customer so well, the product or service fits him and sells itself. So what's the experience that you really want your customers to have as they're interacting with your business? Are you ready to really face the realities of what is going on in your business? Let's get you back in the driving seat and building intentionally towards what you want. Decide what is really important to you and to your business and stick to it consistently. Building a business is pretty tough. It can be a long, hard road. So make sure that you're building something really meaningful to you that will sustain you through the tough times. Be intentional and say no to things that don't serve you and the goal that you want to achieve. And as I pass over to you, that is really what I want you to take from today. What is the outcome that you're seeking? What is it that you're trying to build? What is the result? What is the goal? Put your energy into getting really clear about that, but allow yourself to do things your own way. Yes, of course, you're learning from me. You might be learning from others, but when you synthesize all of that learning and you bring it inside of you, what, what comes out must really be congruent with you. It must work for you. If you want to build a huge multinational, huge huge company absolutely then go for it I am here to support you but if you just want to do your thing that's okay too and I want to support you in that focus on listening to yourself and ask yourself what do you need so that you can spend more time in your flow and don't forget that the opposite of flow is friction so if you feel like things are difficult, you're banging your head against a brick wall and things aren't really working, instead of keeping on going, just take a bit of a step back and take a bit of a look. Get some objective input, hire the services of a business coach, take some time to look at what you're doing and where an easier path would start from and lead to. Ask yourself, what would a business that really works for me look like? Let me know your thoughts and questions on this or any other topic relating to how to simplify, grow and enjoy your business. What area of business would you like me to speak about next? Also, who do you know who could benefit from joining this community or having a conversation with me? If you haven't already claimed your free copy of my first book, The Real Entrepreneur, then do go to therealentrepreneurbook.com. And if you prefer an Audible or Kindle version, you can, of course, find those on Amazon. Do check out the energy section of my book for more on customer journeys, customer experience, get the foundations right and you can absolutely build from there. I do hope that you have a lovely weekend, whatever you're doing and whoever you're doing it with. I wish you a happy and peaceful time. And as always, if you want to talk, then you know where I am. Please remember to be where you are in the journey. You don't need to know it all and you definitely don't have to do it all. Take care, stay safe and keep in touch. Bye for now. Have a lovely weekend.